Right here? Where's it going? Some Nick 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 well, this is nice to be here. I never thought I'd get here. Why? I don't know. It's just I've never been in this room. Really? This is the chambers. It's nice. You got your cousin looking at you right from the house. He thinks that one percent is going to save us. Go ahead, Mary. All right, so I'll, I'll call it to order. Um, we would have nomination of officers. That way we have a chairperson for the advisory board. Anybody want to make a motion? Do a chair. Who wants to be the chair? Make Tony. You want Tony? Make Tony. Make Tony. I nominate Tony Fazerano. I second. I move nomination. Nomination to close. Close. <laughs> You didn't give me speech. Like you you both in the office. All those. I, Favor of closing. Aye. All right, all those in favor of nominating Mayor Fazerano as chair? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? We're good. Damn so we now have a chair. Go for it. Okay. Hey. Used to running these things. Go for it. Public comment. Do you have any public comment? Any public would like to speak? No, good. Okay, move on. Okay, no business. Man, no no business, man, business. New business. Update on the park development. The other one really who should be here who's not here is, is Owen Tark. Remember Owen? Scott made the pitch and sold you guys yeah. the uh, three-legged pony. And I'll take the hit for that. I didn't realize that he was supposed to be on the committee. Huh. So that's, I will take the all hit for that one. So yeah. say that all again. Right, put that in the minutes. Oh, right? I will. Oh, and he was the, he was the other guy. I, I remember the tar farm. Yeah. yeah. No, he was with, when we made the pitch. He was the older guy with me. Okay. One was mm -hmm. living around. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. 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 One, of the, one of the other selectmen. Right. So, um, as we stand right now, as far as the park for development, um, we have um, one of the front lots. Actually, it's going to it's going to split into two lots. Um, they have finished removing the trees, and they're in the process of finalizing remo removal of the stumps from that property. So then we can then potentially go out to bid. Um, to remove the gravel from that and bring it down to, um, to kind of a shovel ready site for um, any uh, businesses coming in. Um, the back lot behind that, um, we've not done any site development work, if you will, on that. Um, there are uh, the high wire, high wire power lines that run through that. Um, and so I really, We'll have to look at what makes the most sense for that. Um, if you try and drop it down to more road level, you're going to end up with a mountain in the middle because you have you can't gravel, you know, you can't re remove the earth from around certain er certain distances around the power line poles, which will basically leave a mountain in the middle on that. So I think we might need to kind of wait on that one and look to see what um, interest we have on that back lot and maybe. Um, look at that for um, how we're going to handle that in the future. As far as fiber, um, the last utility we need to put in is the fiber. So um, I'm setting up a meeting with um, CTC. They are a, um, a nonprofit agency that works with municipalities and um, utilities in order to be able to negotiate um, installation. What I really want to be able to do is when we put fiber in, we don't put it in as a vendor specific. So I don't want just Verizon running their their fiber in and then all of our all of our businesses have to be Verizon customers. Right? They don't end up having any option. And they may come in, they may be relocating from somewhere and they may already have um, a data agreement with another vendor. So I want to be able to run in the fiber as non-vendor specific. So that's why I'm working with CTC to be able to determine what's the best avenue for that. Um, so I'm trying to very quickly get uploaded on um, fiber connectivity and um, how we need to go about getting that done. So my hope is that we'll be able to get that run by the springtime. The good news is, is, is the piping's all there, yeah. the infrastructure's there. 
So all you have to do is pull it in. We don't have to dig up any right. well, they, trades. They, they, have these lots been on the market? Well, Delphi's. Um, so we've been that. creating a marketing brochure for them, and we've been in, um, and they are on the market. She's been getting, you know, she fields um, calls on them um, in various businesses. We are also, and sometimes, you know, some businesses that call don't necessarily meet the um, requirements of a of the tech park, right? So, um, but um, so they are on the market. We are looking at um, commercial um, realtor options as well as to go to a, um, a commercial realtor and really um, push on marketing. Um, the the other phase that we're that the that Delta and I have been working on is the zoning right now for that section is the is an overlay district, um, and the underlying zones to that is an agricultural and residential zone. So we're working with the zoning. We had a joint we had a joint meeting with the EDC and the zoning commission to talk about that. Um, the zoning commission is um, looking for um, Delta and I to present. Um, uh, proposed zoning regulation change to basically remove it as an overlay district. Call it just a district, designate what we are considering green technology um, and what um, and what that what that actually means. So that way we don't, you know, we don't have a farm that's gonna want to go in there or somebody that just wants to build subdivision houses and stuff because that's not our intent with any of this. So um, we're kind of closing that loophole and gap um, at the same time. The other thing that we wanted to make everybody aware of, and it's it's already been out in the press, but we wanted to tell you what's going on with phase two. And um, as we talked when oh, we phase two. proposed phase two, <laughs> uh, uh, thank one. you. When we went around and sold phase one to everyone, we said there's potentially a phase two, but the town doesn't own the land. And uh, that's still the case. We had the owner or the person that has options on the land for phase two come to us and uh, propose a, a phase two and what we said it was a unanimous decision we haven't even sat down and, and negotiated so it's a proposal now but the feeling among all of the board of selectmen and the mayor was that nothing happens in phase two until we sell phase one and the and the developer uh, agreed with that so we want to kind of put your minds at ease that you know you're not all of a sudden going to see a, a lot sold in phase two and then not have something in phase one so we made that loud and clear to them. Um, we don't own the land in phase two. Um, so you know, when it, when it, uh, it's nothing that we, we get you guys involved with that uh, would be a, a, a private developer deal if we can, if we'll we can make a deal. <laughs> so, but anyway, so that's, that's one thing. So yeah, definitely if, they, if we were to proceed with it, <coughs> proceed down this road of the right. proposal, um, we would definitely be looking to negotiate within that contract protections around um, the ability to sell properties and making sure that our, the town-owned properties, the, the regionally-owned properties are um, sold first and filled first before um, any any potential sales could happen on that secondary. The biggest question Please. around is, how come the YMCA was built like in 18 months? Mm -hmm. You haven't even put a brick in yet. Uh, again, it's a private concern, and their lot was site ready, and they got a lot of help from the parent YMCA. Or words, you know, we have to knock that hill down. It's just gigantic. And, and well, I think once that gets done, you're into grubbing and all that stuff now. Once that gets done and it's down to the level, potential buyers can see it and say, oh, okay. This road right there, but until that time, it's it's a struggle. Is it still you know at, at different points? It looked like lot four and lot three were going to be subdivided into sublots. Is it still just two? As of today, it's two lots. And then if you have a buyer that says, "I don't need twenty five acres," right. I need so lot three is one lot three is one lot and lot two is two lots. So one lot lot four has been subdivided. Okay. Lot four is the one that's originally 22.6 acres. Yeah, from up to the that. beginning of that is rubbed and cleared, and so it's a difference of seven point something acres and 15 or something for the back. Right, and we oh, have no. 17 acres is the back part and front part is. 
So that piece has been subdivided. Um, and then there's, you know, we could always, lot three could, is another lot that could, has the potential of being additionally subdivided into smaller lots as well. Um, as we go along. Going back to the front lots, and the trees are cleared, being stumped out right now, gravel. How does that work? Uh, a contractor is going to come in, bid on the gravel, and away it goes. So it's going to be paying something for that. Does that get rolled into the park business, or does it go to the town of Half of that gravel money goes to Wheel Grader. Okay. But the original deal was Wheel Grader gave us the land. They gave 62 acres of land to Puck. We gave 15 point something to the YMCA. And part of the deal was whatever gravel you get out of the land we gave you, we get half. And we agreed to that. Okay. So where's you get half, they get half. Is that correct, Tom? Right. Correct. He's, so we haven't designated because we haven't done any graveling yet. The town hasn't yeah. designated that that the any gravel sales, the town's the town of Putnam's portion, they could decide to designate it to go to a specific fund to deal with additional development costs to, or anything like that. To help with the property and the mm -hmm. development the costs. The development costs or marketing yes. costs or whatever might be yes. for that. Okay. That would be something that they would look at when they are negotiating that contract. We would designate at that point okay. where but, that revenue But to answer your question, it's not like we take the gravel revenue and say, okay, here's your 10%, here's your 10%. Right, that, you know I mean? right. No, I, um, I'd rather see the money get poured back into that to right. get the fiber well, and start sure. working. The, fi the fiber is the, you know, going right. to be quite expensive. So. Well, and the fiber, I think... Um, but I think it will help sell the park. Yeah. Yes. You know. Right. And I think we have sufficient funds remaining still to get the fiber installed. But I need to get through the um, process of determining. There was some old quotes that, that we had received um, a year and a half ago. Um, so I need to refresh them and make sure that they are really the best quality fiber that we want to get in there. Because, you know, you want to pull the best you can pull at this point. Um, so the price may fluctuate. But I, I think that... Right now, I think that we're in good shape to be able to still get that fiber run with the funds that we have available. So, do you know <clears throat> what customer you're going after with the fiber pole? No, we're, what I'm trying to do with the fiber pole is actually pull in dark fiber that's non vendor specific. So, I that way. That, but, but I mean, are you going to pull in like a D4 line or? You know how many gigabytes? Well, that's why I'm. I'm. You're working on. That. I'm working with a. Yes, I'm working with a consultant to be able to advise us best on. I am not an IT guru, um, and so I need to rely on those that. And so they've been building um, <coughs> gigabyte networks, um, and um, and they've been working with a lot of municipalities on various networks around the country. So um, CCAT. Um, I don't know if you guys know who CCAT is, um, Connecticut Center of Advanced Technologies. Um, they do a lot of IT stuff within the state. Um, they were the ones that recommended me to go to CTC um, to get that um, information and figure out exactly what kind of fiber we want, what kind of dark fiber we want to get run in there. So that way. So they should come back and ask you a series of questions. So. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. We should have a, a long laundry list of questions Great. to go through to try and figure out. Yep. So that way answers. we're leaving that field as wide open as we can. So <laughs> it'll be as marketable as possible. Right. Nothing worse the, than the dark fiber getting lit off all of a sudden you're out of exactly. capacity. So. Exactly. Right. And that's why I want to make sure that if we're going to put it in, we're going to put it in at the highest capacity we can put in. Yep. Now, in terms of um, potential clients, Delpha talked to us at the Board of Selectmen meeting, um, I think it's probably been a few months ago, and you were talking about potential calls that you got about land at the old park versus the new park, and the consensus on the, on the Board of Selectmen was push the new park, because we think once we get that first customer in there, we get the first client in there, you know, it kind of is going to start rolling. So I don't know if you, I haven't talked to you in a few months. Uh, any updates or things that you, I know some of the stuff is confidential, but I, whatever you can share. Sure. The, the gentleman that I've been courting is out of state and uh, it's for a manufacturing company. 
Um, but he needs to build a 60,000 square foot building. And he wants room to expand and he needs substantial parking area, that kind of thing. So at this point, um, we don't have a lot that, it, it, the first, the lot four, the right. large one, um, he can't, it's too small to build in the front. So he needs something level that's large. So, so he wouldn't that that facility wouldn't necessarily fit within the tech park facility no. at this point. Not his needs at this point. Not and needs. that's the importance of the shovel ready flat land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that we had spoken about for any of our existing lots. Right. On the Can other we, lots, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. On the other lots, do we? When you mentioned flat land, yeah, is this pretty flat off to the left? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yep, lot, lot three. three. Lot three is, and that's kind of the perfect lot. It's 2.26 acres, and it's right near the river. Lot two, well, lot two is what the YMCA is on. Um, there's been discussion in the EDC meeting about requesting of the Board of, uh, of the Zoning Commission to look at one acre lots because we have, may I approach the gentleman? <laughs> if we, if you look at the different scenarios that we have of subdivision, this is lot four, and that's lot four that's the hill. So this is the area that's being cleared and grubbed, 4B and 4C. And if you look at this other conceptual subdivision, we've broken that flat land that's cleared and grubbed into three additional lots. So that would bring us more revenue. Um, lot this is lot three here but the beginning of it is only 2.26 acres in our zoning regulations minimum lot size is two acres if we approach the zoning commission to have the lots as one acres one acre that would allow us to split these because this is challenging this is the mountain with it has the high power lines that mary was just talking about so we could subdivide these into 1.7, 1.4, and two acres. And we could subdivide this. We have someone interested in this property here, but he really only wants one acre. So it's kind of, you know, do we want the spirit of the technology park to be one acre or two acres? We don't have to subdivide them. If we're allowed to subdivide them into one acre, then there's more flexibility for anybody who wants a smaller mm -hmm. lot. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so those are the two. Do all um, of you have a copy of what she's dealt with? Can you? I know Pomfret does. Mm -hmm. Pomfret does. Can you just make additional copies? Sure. And we can get them distributed to all of you so that way you have them all. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. So mm -hmm. when you were down in Virginia, See if you can throw some defense stuff up this Send way. Set up. <clears throat> Got a perfect we, spot. We don't really have defense here. We'll get people protest. We'll shoot them. Just have, have the people come up here. There you go. As long as they're not non-profit. Federal or state. We're going to be able to tax. Right? Be able to tax. Be able to you guys want us to be able to tax? That's right. <laughs> yeah. Don't make any. It wouldn't be much help. Exactly. So. The other good news is Putnam's low rate went up from... Uh, I think back in the day when we were talking, it was in the 15s. We're we're at 20 now, so ah. your tax revenue would also go up. Uh, so. Bring us no. tears to my eyes. In the 17th, I'll fall off. You've done well. I can compliment you guys. So. He said it's a long process. I, I'm Nancy. Uh, this should have been done last week. Love and I have learned to mellow out. Scott's a, a, used to be a developer. Now he's a salesman. He'll sell the Brooklyn Bridge. That's right. He, he, he did. He did. <laughs> <laughs> when we when we went into this, um, we got the pitch. And, well, it was a great pitch. But when we actually did our numbers, uh, and we thought there would be one sale in the first four years. Uh, we did too. We, well, but so yeah. we're not there yet. We're, we're still right. we're still doing all right. Uh, and I do agree that once that first one goes, depending on which slot size it is, right. and how right. you subdivide it, we should yeah. then have a domino effect. Yep. Right. So, now, does the YMCA have a draw? Anybody? 
Is that a draw? I mean, to to potential. I, I think expected two thousand members. They got nine thousand. I think it isn't draw the future. No, I meant, I meant yeah. as a business. Of, in terms of the tech part, if somebody yeah. says, hey, why is he right across the street? Right, that's part of the sure. pitch. Because, you know, a lot of the ones that do advanced technology, green technology, are also conscious, you know, Healthy they have people. wellness programs mm -hmm. and things like that. And so it is a good pitch for, um, they're, you know, they're usually more interested in their, um, in the community aspect for their employees <clears> as well. <throat> and so this gives a rounded benefit to the employees. Mm -hmm. For community, they have a YMCA readily accessible. They could, you know, go down on their lunch hour if they wanted to, to have swim a few laps and then come back. Um, so it does give that. Um, one of one of the things that we're pitching to, and this is all in the marketing part, is that a trail the trail system has been has ended at the YMCA actually with the canoe launch and um, and um, an easy canoe launch. And it's now a 2.4-mile um, river trail from Providence Street to there. So we have built it as a, and marketed it as a green park and a wellness program also. Um, but I think one of the most important things is that that's what people are looking for for their employees is quality of life for their employees, and that's pretty much how we're selling it. That's the... And that's actually the number one selling point. Other thing, my my, uh, my daughter is the president of uh, Newport Hospital. She was telling me the most important thing: she hires a new doctor. What kind of private schools do you have here? Mm -hmm. We got Parkford, we got Rectory. There's a Marianapolis. There's a ton of okay. private schools, and that's what these executives want for the kids. Plus, we just spent thirty-six million on Putnam High, Woodstock, combined with High. So there are a lot of schools around here. For the executives and their kids to, to participate in. The YMC is a draw, private school area is a, is a good draw. Uh, they, I hate that term quiet corner, but there's a lot of activities that go on here. The Woodstock Fair just ended, you had a record crowd there. We got the Brooklyn Fair. We're going to have this stupid Woodstock Fair, which is <laughs> traffic from here to East Jamru. Our roads look like. Uh, Beirut, but that's, you know, as I said, I'm sorry, 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 i Eversource yeah. is doing a huge yeah. upgrade right through here, which is an, another big. With six asphalt trucks every day. Yeah, yeah. it's con you know they're replacing a couple thousand poles, yeah. and because they're eliminating the substation that we have on Kennedy Drive, that whole substation is uh -huh. going to go away. They're looping it back to the Tracy <clears throat> Road substation so they can create better efficiencies. But huh. it's you know in and among the water and the yeah. you know everything else. And Yankee Gas is in the roads and. Yeah, our roads are shoot up. If you guys want to come back to Putnam, just to let you know, Friday night, first Fridays, it'll be a. Uh, uh, Rick is a big participant of Putnam. Yep. He's so, all time. Is it a country western movie or something? Yes. Yes. Yeah. No. So, yes, we're cowboy boots. Country western, Tony? We go over that. Told me you need to get a cowboy hat. It's all this morning. A big sheriff's badge on it? That's right. That would be funny, wouldn't it? So, getting back to the front lawn. Yep. It's cleared, yep. it's scrubbed. What do you think for a timeline to start getting that gravel? Got to put off the bid. So, and that's where we end up with that that proposal that we're currently right. entertaining. I know you've probably seen it in the paper. So the proposal is, um, he's interested in having sole gravel rights to that to the front pieces. So, the they need to get through the rest of the research on. Is it equitable? Is it, you know, is what he's proposing as market value really market value? Um, so I'm contacting, I've contacted a couple of um, independent parties to do that evaluation. Hopefully we can get that done in the next 30 days or so to be able to really get a, because we all want to get moving forward on this. Um, the estimations that we've gotten for graveling that front lot out, it could be done in, you know, under six months mm -hmm. to gravel that front lot out. So. I don't know that that would necessarily really do a whole lot of hold up on um, marketing it. 
if, as long as we have that plan and we know that we're moving forward and we have that timeline, you know, I think that, you know, we could definitely still, because uh, uh, anybody coming in, a business coming in, it's going to take them a period of time before they're even hitting the shovels to the ground anyway. So, um, but that's kind of what we're looking at at the moment. We don't, yeah. Did you give any thought to uh, not put the cable on the ground? Wait to see what the person who comes in actually wants? We could. It's just then you're going to determine the entire park on one person. Well, yeah. you know, you can't maybe add at any time. And they could. And what we have is a, we have a four inch conduit down there. Yeah. So one yeah, one uh, one dark fiber run isn't going to take up that full whole right. four. You know, so somebody they could have cable. They could have another vendor run a cable run. What if somebody wanted to buy a lot and wanted to use a specific vendor? They, with a the generic cable, they could do that. that they, the right, that's the idea is that we would get dark fiber and that would be lit by the, anybody. Have you had prospective customers ask whether you had fiber on the lot? Not yet. Not? not yet, no. But you, you, but you determined that would be. Uh, As a technology would, park, yeah. um, fiber is usually would be potentially a, a, a big resource for them. I'm not so much worried about the desert. I'm more worried about the technology. Sure. You do it today. Oh yeah, in terms of changing. You may not have right. the right cable. Right. 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 And that's why I that's why I really want to, I'm not rushing to get it in the ground. Because okay. um, I want to make sure that whatever goes in there is, <clears throat> is, is going to be, is good. yeah, well, is going to be the best thing we can get in there. the customer will use. Right. Yeah. And, and more importantly, where's the pot? You know where where are you hooking into the big fiber right so if that's close by and you've already got the four inch conduit to me that's a sold deal anyway I, that stays to pump a wire you know yeah. get a cable through um, i think we have to pull the fiber from the i think we have to pull from the schools but i'm not going to be positive from the school from the fiber the fiber run i don't think that it's fully out onto kennedy drive so we have to pull it from this way but who's providing the service to this to that area where you would hook into it. That's what, that's all part of this trying to figure out where what we need to do. We haven't determined that yet. We haven't determined who. So the Nutmeg Network is currently providing to the, school. that's what to the schools. Say. Yeah. So um, you know we could pull okay. from there, or do we just run a dark fiber right. and leave it as a dark fiber, and then we do a future build on yep. where is it coming from? Yep. You know. There's a couple of ways to go to go about right. it. Okay. And maximum strands. Exactly. That's what I want. <laughs> Load up those strands. I don't want. Uh, going back to the zoning, you know, the potential zoning change is. I mean, is that in the works to do to go to the one acre and remove it as an overlay, or is that to be decided over you know six months? Or? So um, right now, um, Delta and I are working with. Um, we're going to be. We're going to be working with C, uh, CME is going to be giving us a, a proposal for cost to give us consulting services for we don't have a planner so they would be providing that planner service to help us rewrite those zoning regulations which is really focusing on putting it down to a uh, removing that overlay district piece um, and we could look at incorporating that um, one acre so the plan is that within the next two months we will have something to present to the Zoning Commission for consideration on making those changes. That's kind of our timeline at, at this moment. Mm -hmm. I've never rewritten zoning regulations, so. It only takes we'll learn six it. or seven years. <laughs> Don't say such things. We're in year four. Right? <clears throat> you have well, a planner, Brooklyn? Huh? You have a planner? No. Yeah, two plan? days a week. Two days a week. About Paul Frey. We don't have a planner. How about, well, you got nothing over there. You got a planner, Scala? Nope. Looks good, let's do it. <laughs> we need a planner. It's good, let's see. Right, right off the bat, our new town administrator, five months. We need He's a already looking for a planner. <laughs> we need a planner. <laughs> we have a planner. I know. It was a stiff. We, have, we need a planner. Have, right? yeah. Fire it. We have yeah. a planner. Yeah. No, you defunded the position there. That's right. That's <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We need, we a, need a planner. planner. We need a good planner. Exactly. I need so, a good active planner. Well, what are you going to need from us? What, what can we chip? Do anything? Um, Support, whatever. 
Well, I mean, as we talked about in the initial concept stage, so far, Delta has been the, the go-to marketing person. Um, not that Delta hasn't been doing a good job, as you can see, she's got all kinds of maps, she's working on brochures, and she's been talking to, to everybody that she knows, but um, what we're thinking is to also hire a, a, a realtor that, that you know specializes as a commercial realtor and have a caveat to say you know if Delpha or any of our partner towns have a prospective client to to allow that but again in terms of help from the neighboring towns you know you guys if you have potential calls and, and uh, economic development people that, that you know want to locate in your town by all means contact Delpha and uh, you know Hit it from all angles, so that's because uh, you may not be able to accom accommodate them, you know, location in your own individual towns, but it could be accommodated maybe here in the tech park. It sounds so. like you already can't accommodate a sixty thousand square foot request. Right, it's the way it is right now. With the now, there's another option that we were just talking about before we came in here, because of the way those poles are the high tension lines you got you got to leave 50 50 and then 80 on the other side but there's also a potential depending on the amount of value of the gravel you could also move them and put two new poles up and you know reconfigure so that's a, a function of and the developer also mentioned that idea so well, i'm thinking if he mentioned the idea there must be enough well, gravel. Those know. poles run all the way through that. Right. It's the same one going through Mansfield, Hampton, Chapel, in the same line, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're not here yet, is what, what I'm understanding. No, we already have, these poles are already in place. These are existing oh. high wire poles that are in there. It's a Eversource easement that goes through. Right. And um, you can't, you know, obviously you can't remove So they all. just upgraded. So we would need to pay, we would have to negotiate with Eversource and pay to move that whole section of line to another, to another, yeah. move it over. So that way, um, and even if it were. There's not that much. I was kind of shocked that he, that, came up, that he mentioned it. So there might be know. enough on his side, but I don't know if there's enough on our side. No. Um, even if we were to move to the back end of the lot, because we have to maintain buffering anyway on the back end of the lot because it's up against the airline trail. So that would provide good buffering if you move that, you know, over, you know, a few acres. But um, again, it may be completely cost prohibitive mm -hmm. on that. So that's, you know, kind of the the. the the quirk with that back lot. So the conservation area can't be changed. Correct. Correct. So Correct. You can't change the conservation area. Right. Right. The good news is, in terms of selling the park, our existing industrial park, as we talked about three or four years ago, and we do have some lots left, but the development costs, um, we're actually getting somebody to, to estimate what the development cost would be to anybody that the, the potential buyers but it looks right now that you know the development costs far outweigh what the value of the lots are and, and we're going to get a, a number to, to pin it down but delta sold some neighboring uh businesses some lots for expansion but you know we're, we're running out of inventory so uh, and delta has got the directive from the board of selectmen that we want to push phase one so I think, I think that's loud and clear so uh, that's that's where the focus is going to be. Good, thanks. So yeah, if you can we, we, think we, of we, anything, feel free to reach out. We're hoping to have the check for you, but uh, we don't, we're hoping sure. to have that ten percent check. check. Yeah, Wait, it's this long. What's another couple of months? <laughs> so, <laughs> but people do ask. I'm sure. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. With the lack of. Uh, and, and the changes in things, people are asking. Some action right now. Yeah. As did we. But you're, I, I would say you're getting, I mean, I think the economy is picking up, and you, you can address that better than I could tell. Sure. Well, look, one of the things for the marketing is, you know, we wanted to try this with me selling the lots, but I keep telling Mary this the same scenario. If you need your transmission fixed, you don't go to your dentist, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. These brokers, the commercial brokers, they are connected through a network called RootNet that is unbelievable. It's national, it's global. We actually asked 
uh, LoopNet to come in and talk to us to see if there was a certain package that we could reach out nationally and globally. It was so cost prohibitive we couldn't even couldn't even look at it. It's been about thirty thousand dollars a year. But these big commercial bro uh, brokers are are connected. We've been working with CERC on uh, the logo, uh, the Connecticut Economic Resource Center, and uh, and the marketing for the for the tagline, that kind of thing. So we're on their site finder. So when they're courting people from Brazil and um, uh, I don't remember where else, but so they're connected to DECB. So we have that state connection but we really don't have a way to network out of state, never mind globally. So um, when CERC came to speak to us, oh, maybe a year and a half ago, they brought two commercial brokers with them that they use a lot. And you know, they gave us a lot of scenarios and ideas of how to reach out. Um, but I think at this point, we need to cast that net just a little bit bigger and uh, go to the experts for that. Yes, the idea. I think we mentioned that at the board of selectors meeting. Yeah, so we're. RFP or? Yeah, I think we have to do a request for proposal on that, um, and then get in what our, um, what the you know what's the commission rate going to be on the commercial broker, um, and then choose which one we want to. We'll do presentations. We'll obviously include this this group in the and then make the decision. My phone quit ringing after July first. No budget. <laughs> people are, I do hear that once in a while from people that are looking around and saying, hey, we don't even know what's well, going down the road. I mean, I envisioned that it would be a, out of the, out of the sale price. Yeah, the, yeah. the commission comes out. Well, that's right, price. That's and that's what they're waiting for. Of course. For. Yeah. 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 The com any commission that would come right. out of the closing, one of them being the ultimate closing. Yeah. So. But ultimately, it's still a you know an overall cost that yeah. you know, everyone needs to be yeah. cognizant of. But at least there's a cost. Yes, there's a price. Exactly. Because right. there's a sale. And by subdividing these lots into smaller lots, and I think we should ask that question to the experts, is it worth us pursuing? Because we will get a better return on the smaller lots, which may be absorbed into the 6% that we have to pay the commission. So, you know, we might recoup that on the other end if mm -hmm. uh, but if one acre lots aren't selling exactly if it's two acre lots that are selling we don't want to subdivide to one acre lots and then well if you subdivide and somebody needs two lots they they might two, then they buy two, two. Lots. and we may have to give them a you know a value on the two lots and that kind of thing mm -hmm. so um, right. i think that the greater we keep our options open for that kind of flexibility the better off we'll be yeah the NSA's state's not helping us out either. All, all really? those big firms. Firms <laughs> <laughs> leave in Connecticut. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, well, it's awful. It's no, it really puts a damper on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can offer, you know, the tech park's well situated for all the reasons you've just mentioned. And people are, they see that and they initially say yes, and then they look at the rest of the package, which is the state. Mm -hmm. They look at the so. sustainability of the state yep. and the the consistency of the state and it's really just not there. Hope you're all going to go see the economic development commissioner oh, when she comes up to yeah, breakfast with breakfast the commission. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we so need a quarterly basis. I'm sorry. You're going to meet on a quarterly basis. Yeah. So that's the next step. Step was I'm assuming quarterly is sufficient. Do we need to meet? Does anybody want to meet more? I don't think so. Not is quarterly out. too much? It's do we nice want to do? To no, well, I think for now we should be quarterly. Quarterly is good? Okay. We need to keep up with what the heck's happening yeah. and also what's not happening. Right. And I think you're ready in this room goes to enough meetings. I agree. Mm -hmm. And we can move around and go to Brooklyn. Timing wise, during the day works fine for everyone involved. I don't think any of us need to add another night meeting. No. No. <laughs> so, quarterly. Oh. Okay. So we'll send out a, um, a meeting schedule, and um, we just rotate it around the, the group for the quarters. Sure. So the next one will start down at you guys, the next quarterly meeting. Does that work, Brooklyn? Sure.
and we'll just town hall. No, it'll be in the could it be Green Building, sixty nine South Main Street, where we went where we went before. Where we went before. Yeah, the the um, where the the building is. Right, same yeah, building. Not far from the dumping yard. Same building. Which is how I navigate. So you got a better room in there, though. And ours, ours will be the library. It's yours is nice, going to be at the library? Nice conference room. So yours will be the one right after that. We'll go to, mm -hmm. we'll do Scotland next. It should still be open by then. <laughs> Maybe we should do Scotland <laughs> first, just in case, you know? We want to plot right. Mm -hmm. No. Town hall. No. Town hall. Town hall. Town hall. Yeah. Got it. As long as it's this size of a group. Right. Yeah. This is pretty much what you're going to get, so. We'll rotate it around. Okay. Just for the sake of minutes, can hmm? I go cool. around and oh, names? Daniel, sign S Y M E. Scotland. Scotland. Craig Baldwin. Pot store extraordinaire. <laughs> <laughs> the stores in every paper I see now. The picture. It's, 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 it's good. Well, He's a celebrity. I'm Rod Perry from Scotland. Well, there's some unhappy legislators, let me tell you. Uh, it's mm -hmm. good. Rick. Rick Ives. Somebody's got to rattle off pages. Yeah. Make stuff happen. Get some Keep Nick Carter. The smallest guy in the state. No. I thought your article was going on. Open people's eyes. It's a so do you think we're going to do quarter meetings? And then we're going to start Brooklyn, Scotland, and then Pomfret, and then back here. Um, I think we're good. Can you pass this 1% average in...